Welcome back to How to Build an F-14 Tomcat. Last night, I told you guys that uh, I would get the video going and show you how I'm going to figure out how to do the whole uh, turkey feathers on the exhaust nozzle. For those who don't know what turkey feathers are, they're the little fingers that uh, expand and contract for the afterburner and non-afterburning modes and all that stuff. So, uh, first thing we have to do is we got to figure out how many we need and going by my F-14 uh, Danny Corman's book again I just the particular picture right here I just counted around to see how many there were and there are 12 uh, 12 panels or feathers whatever you want to call them on on the F-14 D uh, the, which is the General Electric F-110 turbo fan engine so we got 12 uh, 12 feathers we need to come out come up with so just a little notebook I've got for all my little builds I just write down any pertinent information I need for it so I wrote down that we need 12 total feathers and they need to go around our exhaust uh, nozzle plug so here I've got the sides and I uh, trim those to shape or trim the fiberglass that I did yesterday down uh, glass the top part here which is still not quite completely cured it'll be done in the morning and I let that go green and I trimmed it down rough shape rough with a shape so pretty much the plug is glassed ready for a little bit of a uh, smoothing of the fiberglass and it'll be ready to go so um just some simple math I need to find out how wide each feather needs to be so I need to know the circumference around this so using my lines that I use to figure out the center point of the of the plug, move the camera up a little bit for you guys. I uh, just measured across, which for my particular plug is exactly eight and one eighth inches in diameter. So then using some simple simple uh, math, found the circumference of it, which ended up being just over 25 and a half inches. Divide that by 12 and you get 2.13, which works out perfect if you want the feathers to butt up against each other. So uh, if you want them to go just right up against each other and butt together, 2.13 inches per feather will be how wide they need to be. But since the turkey feathers slightly overlap each other, um, you've got a little bit more math to do and just kind of, you got to make them a little bit wider than that 2.13 inches. So using the photo right here on our book, which works out to be almost perfect side view of what I needed. I, uh, I just measured how long it was on the picture, which ends up being right at 2.6 inches. And I knew that our exhaust exhaust nozzle plug was four and a half inches. So I took the four and a half four and a half and I divided it by the 2.6 and I got 1.603. Um, you're probably wondering why I'm using the picture instead of three views. Uh, the three views are mostly the artist's rendering. It's just a drawing that an artist does, not necessarily coming from uh, the manufacturer of the airplane. So I like to use pictures along with the three views to get as accurate as possible. And uh, a lot of times you find the three views aren't quite uh, right compared to what the photos and the actual airplanes are. In more instances than not, that's uh, that's what works out. So we know that to butt it up, they need to be 2.13 inches. We, need, we know they need to be a little bit wider. And we know the difference between our photo and our plug. So... um. What I did is basically I just started taking a lot of measurements and I came up with a little rough sketch that was a little bit larger than the actual turkey feather. And uh, it's got all my different dimensions for the length for where it tapers and the, the curves, everything that I would need to reprodu reproduce it. So then what I did is I just added, um, I took the photo and I made up two of these at 2.13 inches wide and I overlapped them to where they matched what you see here in the photo 
and I measured how much that they overlapped here at the at the root of them and I came up with they overlap roughly two tenths of an inch so I took that two tenths and uh, it's actually about 0.175 inches or so like that so it's just a tad bit over 0.3 inches total for each end so um what it is I just took that 0.3 and I added it to 2.14 and I got and I just rounded it down to 2.4 inches to make it easier so they overlap just slightly under uh, 150,000 so it's like 130 or so each so then that comes up with a 2.4 inches so then using my little drawing here and I just drew a big grid on a piece of litho plate that I didn't get a picture of and I've already <laughs> done all that work so you guys don't really see it but basically the big square litho I just 2.4 inches from the end, four point four and a half inches long, and uh, I just drew that all on one big piece of litho plate, and then I made drew one of these onto the litho. And the only reason I drew one instead of doing them all is I used the one the the one that I drew. I cut it out, and then I use that as a template for all the rest of them. And then when I cut all the rest out, I cut away the line, so I cut on the inside edges of them. That way they were all exactly the same. And uh, these things are literally, they're like at most uh, 10 thousandths of an inch off between each other. So they're really close using that method. So I ended up making, I always make one extra just in case because you always screw one up. So I've got all 12 of them here. And these are all finished and ready for the final bit of shaping and whatnot to go on the plug. And then for the 13th one, which is the one that I messed up, I uh, when I was drawing the radiuses here with a unit bit, I kind of, I always, you always get that one that's kind of slips on you, and this happened to be the one that it did that. So once I had the all 12 of them cut out, and number 13 cut out, I uh, again using the exact same photo. You can just very, very faintly see here in the uh, in the photo that there are some rivets, and I mean they are just very, very faint. Yeah, you can see them there along the bottom edge. So there's a ton of them on these nozzles, and uh, I didn't. It looked good without the rivet detail on them, but they just kind of looked plain. And uh, with as much detail as I put into the rest of it, I didn't want to leave. Uh, that detail out of the exhaust nozzle just because it's an exhaust nozzle so I uh, took the 13th one and I drew the pattern for all the rivets onto it and then what I did is my little riveting tool which in this case just happens to be a set of uh, it was a 1.5 millimeter Allen driver that I broke the tip off of it's the same one that I've used for all the rivets on the rest of the airplane. And I found a drill bit that was just slightly oversized compared to this. And I went along with this thing in the drill press and just started drilling holes at all the intersections that I filled them in between, filled out uh, between those holes with more holes. Then I took these and at first I started doing these individually. And since there's 12 of them, it would have taken forever. Um, so then I started stacking two. And it did really well with two. So then I started stacking three. Three did really well. And then by the third set that I did, I tried stacking four and that didn't work at all. Um, the first two came out really well. And the third one was so-so. And the fourth one just had no detail to it whatsoever. So I just started stacking two and three at a time until I got all 12 done. And uh, what I did is I just overlapped it. Put a real small piece of uh, masking tape here at each end and just started hammering all the detail into it and then once they were done I took the wallpaper roller roll, put them upside down rolled them while they were inverted and um, and then flipped it over and rolled it again so I could get uh, as much as that rivet detail rolled back out of it that way they're really really faint just like they are on the full scale so now that all that's done, this, uh, I'm going to call it the, the cheese grate, is trash. I'll probably I'll keep it 
and put it in there with my box of templates just so I have it and once the plug has all this glass is finally cured I'll uh, I, I'll sand it down uh, get all this little fiberglass overhang laid down I'm gonna smear it with body filler get that nice and smooth and then I'll start taking each one of these uh, these turkey feathers I'll anneal them and then I'll roll them and start uh, attaching them to the exhaust nozzle so basically that's how I came about figuring out these uh, these panels it was really just a little bit of trial and error I did you know, two or three uh, individual sets so I did six panels before I came up with this size and I just kind of made it look made it match the photo as much as I could compared to instead of making it match the, the three views so basically the exhaust plug I'm hoping I can get it done tomorrow is my plan or at least get the body filler on there and get it ready for sanding and possibly finish it up on Tuesday um, the rest of the fuselage I got that one little section around the uh, the overwing fairing hatches I've got to finish up and the the tail the, the end of the fuselage where this bad boy uh, bolts up to and once all that is done I am going to start getting back working on parting planes I'll get that uh, I'll finish up that one parting plane for the vertical fin I'll uh, mold that vertical fin I've got to order a ton of clamps for all these molds and I gotta start getting get started on that vacuum bagging system as well so that's uh, where everything is at at the moment and I guess once I get started on these vacuum bag machines or parting blends or whatnot I'll pop up the uh, I'll pop up the video camera and make a few more videos for you guys and gals. Um, if y'all want more videos of all the parting planes and stuff to where it's just the same run of the mill that uh, B1 Bob's doing that I've shown previously how I do it. If y'all want more videos showing the same thing over and over, let me know and I'll make more videos. Um, I might even uh, pop out pop a nose comb part and one of these once I get the the plug finished I might actually build make up two of these that way I can test the fit of the actual part up against the fuselage before I get too far along with it and make sure it all fits and make sure it is the way it should be and uh, so yeah that's pretty much where I'm at nothing new or exciting going on I gotta do a little bit of maintenance on some of the other airplanes that I do pre-winter maintenance on them and then um, again, I pull them out right before the ne next season, and I go through pretty much the entire airplane, make sure everything's good. The Falkworth's uh, going to be a priority here pretty soon, probably in January. Hopefully, I can get it ready for Top Gun and go down there and qualify for that. So, um, anyways, you guys and gals have a good week, and we'll see you with the next video here in the shop.